here today with Juliet Guarino Berg. Uh, Juliet is the elementary STEM specialist at this town school. She's also currently working towards her doctorate at Columbia School of Education. Juliet, thank you so much for joining us. I was hoping you could just introduce yourself and tell us a bit about your involvement with the computational thinking workshops. Yeah, so my name is Juliette Guarino Berg, and I am an elementary science specialist here at the town school. One of the things I do outside of my role as a teacher is provide professional development to teachers via STEM Teachers NYC. And I think one of the most exciting series of workshops that we've done in the last several years is the round of workshops around computational thinking. How we got started was we actually received a grant and we were working with Cornell Tech to take the computational thinking concepts and approaches that they had worked with and developed and bring them into schools by teaching teachers how to engage with those computational thinking concepts and approaches. So that's how we got started with the computational thinking series of workshops. For those who are unfamiliar with computational thinking, what is computational thinking? How would you explain the concept to a teacher hearing about it for the first time? Yeah, this can be really tricky because a lot of people think that computational thinking is synonymous with computer science and coding. Computer science and coding include a great deal of computational thinking, and they are absolutely 100% linked together. But computational thinking is much more than that as well. It's about thinking processes and how we solve problems. So thinking processes and problem solving. How can we use a set of rules or an algorithm to solve similar problems? How can we use the computational thinking concepts and approaches to engage in critical thinking? That is really important to understand. Yes, computational thinking is about coding and computer science, but it's also about thinking critically, problem solving, and solving problems. So what I understand from that is it grows out of some of the way we think about computer science, but it is applicable to how we problem solve, like almost content independent. They can be applied Absolutely. elsewhere. Yep. So when you have teachers and you've had teachers in your workshops, what kind of work are you doing with them around computational thinking, around their own practice? Could you give us some insight into that? Yeah, absolutely. One of my favorite things that we do in the computational thinking workshops is the very first thing that we do on the first day of the workshop. And we have teachers solve a problem or attempt to solve a problem called the taxi cab problem. And the taxi cab problem is a bit of a logic problem that asks how you can get from point A to point B on a grid in how many different ways are there to get from point A to point B on this grid if you're moving right or down. It's really fascinating to see all of the different problem solving approaches that people take to solve this problem. There are a myriad number of approaches that people take. It's really interesting to see the differences and similarities in thinking between different teachers and teacher groups. And what it does is it really uncovers how we think about problem solving, what are people's thought processes, and how can we use information about how people solve problems to better implement computational thinking in our classrooms. So it's a really great way for teachers to make some noticings about their own problem solving, the way they problem solve, and then apply that to the different things that we learn later on in the workshop. Do you often see your teachers almost get distracted trying to really dig into the taxi problem? Yeah, people get really invested in it and they become very set on finding the solution. They want to find the answer. Most times when we've done this, People have not found the answer, but you still gain so much from the experience of attempting to solve the problem. Most of the time, we don't have people solve the problem. We have had it ha happen a couple of times where people have come up with a solution, but really it's a way for teachers to think about their own problem solving strategies and make some noticings about their thinking processes. That's great. I think. As a former math teacher myself who jumps too deep into <laughs> problem solving like that, for my own time and well-being, I might actually remain ignorant of the problem itself and keep myself away. So you introduce your educators to 
computational thinking, you introduce them the idea of being reflective around their own problem solving and strategic with it and how to apply in the class. What are the takeaways that you want educators to have? Anything concrete that you look for them to implement in their classroom, or even things you've heard later on from teachers about what they brought to their classroom? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things I mentioned earlier was the Cornell Tech framework for computational thinking and how they included concepts and approaches. So there is a website called Barefoot Computing, and these concepts and approaches uh, that are included on the Barefoot Computing website are things that we want our teachers to be able to walk away with, things that are concrete, that they understand how to implement in their own classroom. So we have concepts, and those are logic, evaluation, algorithms, patterns, decomposition, and abstraction. And then we also have computational thinking approaches, which are tinkering, creating, debugging, persevering, and collaborating. And we hope through the process of going through the entire workshop that a teacher starts to recognize their usage of these concepts and approaches themselves so that they can then start teaching their own students how to use and be aware of these concepts and approaches when they're delving into problem solving. Excellent. That makes a lot of sense. It sounds like a great launching off point. And I feel like the Barefoot Computing site too is almost a great continuing resource. And you leave a Absolutely. workshop energized to implement in your classroom, especially if it's over the summer and you start doing some planning, but maybe you don't feel as fresh by Monday or by September when it's time to do it. So having that companion resource is always so helpful. How has focusing on computational thinking improved to your practice as an educator? One of the things that I learned from the experience of teaching computational thinking workshops is this issue of making sure that when I'm teaching computational thinking to my students, I'm not just limiting it to computers and computer science and using devices. Using devices is wonderful, but one of the things I do with my first and second graders at the beginning of the year is I provide them with unplugged computational thinking activities that way they can start to experience what it's like to utilize these concepts and approaches before they then in say second month of school in October, jump onto their devices and start actually practicing block coding. There are a couple of tasks that Cornell created that I find to be really engaging for young students that are unplugged. One of them is the computer programmer game where one student is the programmer and the other is the computer and the programmer has to give directions to the successfully in order for that message to uncover something. So it's either a picture or a grid with shapes or a way that the blocks are set up. You want the programmer to be able to use the type of language that the computer, the person who's a computer is going to understand and then go through that process to see how good are my directions. Another activity that we do that is unplugged is basically a computational thinking task that involves making different groups of 10 with different colors. And it's an interesting way of seeing students' math skills action and also seeing how they represent their thinking, whether it's through drawings or numbers or both seeing how students represent their thinking when they're doing something with computational thinking can be really fascinating. I love that logic behind starting them unplugged, building up the thinking, bringing it to the computer set, so to the technology. So they're like warmed up to hit the ground running when they hit the technology. Absolutely. So I feel like you've given some really good insight both to your own use, to what to expect out of the workshops, what people are gotten out of the workshop. One final question. What advice do you have for educators who are looking to bring computational thinking into their own practice? This is a great question because I think a lot of times, and I speak for myself as well, when I say that educators go to professional development experiences, they go to workshops and everything seems really amazing and you wanna implement all of it at the same time. You wanna go into school the next day and be doing all of the things that you learned at the workshop. To me, that's usually not possible. I think it's really important to start slowly with what you're comfortable with and then get bigger. So for example, after I had, for the first time, taught computational thinking to teachers, I thought really 
about how I wanted to implement computational thinking in my classroom. And I said, what is the low hanging fruit of something that I can start implementing right away? And that was how I started doing the unplugged activities with my first and second graders at the beginning of the year. And then I can expand to talking about the vocabulary and having them be metacognitive about the concepts and approaches that they're using and start relating it to other subjects like literacy, for example. There are some really great literacy computational thinking connections that can be made. So I would say start with what you're comfortable with and then um, grow from there. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Uh, Absolutely. 